So we'll start with just some uh, centering and breathing. So see that your uh, feet are on the floor. If you scoot forward, sometimes that allows your feet to hit the floor a little more firmly. And, um, and hands can be anywhere, eyes open or closed. Just take a moment to settle and tune into the breath. So let's just observe the breath and notice if the breath is where the breath is moving your body. Or where does the body move to accommodate the breath? So do you feel your belly moving or the rib cage moving or both? Do you feel the breath in the front or on the sides? How about in the back? And so these areas that I mentioned if you don't feel it there, can you manipulate the muscles that are involved to make the breath move to those locations? So let's go through those again. How about the belly? How about the ribs? Side of the sides of the body? Like you might even feel your arms go out a little bit when you breathe. Back of the body. And then how low in the body, in the lower belly, can you feel? Can you feel your breath all the way down to whatever's on the chair, whatever you feel? Whatever part of your body is on the chair, can you feel the breath move that into the chair when you breathe in? Very subtle, but maybe you can feel that. And when you exhale, it'll feel like it pulls up away from the chair. Can you feel it up here high, up in the collarbone area? What I sometimes call the attic. Air out the attic, get the cobwebs out of there. And especially in the back, like above the shoulder blades. So then play with areas that are super easy for you. Where was your easiest place to breathe? Do that again. That just will relax everything back down in case you tensed up getting it into those places that are more sort of cobwebby. <laughs> and then let's go again to a place that's more cobwebby. So one of the places not so easy for you. And try to stay relaxed when you breathe it into those, those sort of weird places. So you don't want to be going, uh, uh, can I get it back there and move it all around? Just keep the body relaxed and breathe into a different location than your habit. All right, and so every day practice breathing in different locations, especially as we're coming into cold and flu season, it's of course, still COVID season. So getting those, um, not just your lungs sort of exercise, but the, the breathing muscles, your, re your respiratory diaphragm, of course, but the belly muscles, the muscles that are in between your, your ribs, there's lots of muscles that um, we use to move the breath into different locations. So get those muscles working for you and get the, all the parts of the lungs exercised. And that will help help you when you hit cold and flu season. Uh, next, we'll come to the uh, hands face down, palms down on your lap, exhale. And when you inhale, just roll the palms up. Exhale, palms down. Inhale, palms up. And you might notice this teases into the shoulder joint. Even though it's just really moving the lower arm and palms, of course, your hands, 
And then a little more range of motion. Keep your elbows pretty close into the body, but swing the palms out, palms up. Exhale, palms down. Linking that breath with the movement. This is your inhale. Exhale, palms down. And then you can start to move the elbows slightly out, getting a little more range of motion. Remember, we're staying in the range of motion comfortable with our body. Lots of people have shoulder issues at some point or other. So only movement that's completely free and clear in your body. So you don't want a shoulder going up. If you get into an area that's stiff for your body, you can start to go a little higher. Still the opening is your inhale and this kind of closing down is the exhale. Inhale, open it out and up as wide as comfortable for you. Even taking the arms sort of back behind you is, an, is a bigger opening. It'll put the body in a little bit of a back bend, which is fine. And repeat one more. And exhale back down. All right, we're gonna just drop the shoulders down. Drop your arms down, feel like your arms are heavy and it really relax your shoulders down, give them a little shake and then come on back up. And uh, we'll just drop one arm down to the side and look down at the thumb or your finger. Keep your eyes on your finger as you inhale the arm out to the side, up as high as comfortable for you. And then on the exhale, we're gonna bring that hand across the body to the opposite shoulder, touch there, exhale. Inhale, reverse the movement, go back out. Exhale down. And the eyes are following the fingertips as, as much as possible the whole time. Other side, drop that arm down, exhale. Inhale, the arm comes up. Exhale across to the opposite shoulder. Inhale back out. And exhale down. So um, when that arm comes up to the side, you're only going as high up as comfortable for you. And you can keep the elbow a little bit bent. If you would like a little more work, the arm can come up higher and you can straighten the arm as much as comfortable for you. That's your inhale. Exhale, cross. This time we're going to come to the lower rib. Follow it as much as your eyes, as much as your range of of uh, seeing the fingers is allowable. Inhale it back out and exhale down. See if you can drop that arm down a little bit lower so you get a little bit of a lateral there. And then come back up to center. Other side, eyes look at the fingers. Inhale the arm up. And that range of motion is comfortable for you. Exhaling, cross to the opposite lower ribs inhale back out exhale down and a little bit further down so you get a little bit of a lateral stretch through that side waist and then back up to center other side drop the arm down now exhale inhale the arm up as high as comfortable for you Maybe a little further back. And exhale, we're gonna to cross to the opposite hip. Get your other hand out of the way. Inhale, go back out. And you might notice this slight twisting movement we just added. Exhale, drop that arm down a little bit lower into the lateral. And then come back up to neutral. Other side, drop that arm down, exhale. Inhale, the arm up, back, choose some range of motion that's comfortable for you. Exhale, crossing to the opposite hip and just notice that little twist. Inhale, back out. Exhaling down. The next touch point will be our knees. And so I'm going with my breath pace, so your breath may be uh, shorter or uh, your breath may be shorter or longer than mine so you might finish before me or after me and just wait here when you're done next touch point the knees so let's start with that lateral exhale inhale the arm up wherever comfortable for you exhale to the opposite knee 
little twist there for you. Inhale back out. Maybe go back and exhale back down to the side. If you got a block there, you could go all the way to the block. Inhale back up. Let's see. Sorry, I got myself mixed up. Just relax that arm back to the knee. <laughs> it's hard to talk and do this at the same time, right? Other side, drop that arm down. Inhale up and out to the side. And exhale, cross to the opposite knee. Well, that nice little twist. Inhale back out. And exhale down. Maybe to the block. All right, and then come on back up to the center when you're ready. And from here, we're going to take uh, just a rounded spine, roll your back toward the chair back, and drop your chin down. Exhale. And inhale, take a little back bend. Your hands can slide back, squeeze your shoulder blades toward each other, and repeat those two movements. Exhale as a rounded spine, inhale as a back bend. Start with just a real baby back bend, and then as you progress, you can get a little deeper and deeper. I'm going to try to exaggerate the movement so it's easier to see, but you do just in your range of motion. All right, one more rounded spine. One more back bend. And then two neutral. All right, and next we'll take uh, laterals. We'll start with the hands on the hips. Inhale, lengthen the spine, and on the exhale, over to one side. The lateral, stretching through that side waist. Inhale, back up. And exhale, second side. Inhale, back to neutral. And maybe taking your hand down the chair leg or down a little further. And we'll stay for a breath. Squeeze your shoulder blades toward each other. On the inhale, come on back up. Second side. Slide your hand down the chair leg. Maybe there's a chair rung you can reach for. Squeeze your shoulder blades in toward each other. And on an inhale, come on back up. And next time you can go down again, the chair leg or to your block if your block is handy. And we're gonna let that outside arm reach up toward the ceiling or even all the way over by the ear, arm by the ear. Again, squeeze those shoulder blades toward each other. And don't let that outside hip lift up, push it back down toward the chair. And then inhale, come on back up. And exhale that arm back down. Inhale, lengthen. Other side, exhale, down the chair leg or block if you got your block there. Keep that outside hip down. Release the arm, stretch it up. And you can take that arm further if your shoulder and your body allows. You don't want to get a stitch anywhere. Sometimes people feel a little catch in the rib. Back out if you feel that. Inhale, come on back up. When you get any little stitches anywhere in any of these movements, well, we usually go in and out of the movement first before we do a stay. And so uh, just keep doing it uh, dynamically like that, in and out of the movement. Don't stay in a pose that uh, you, your body's telling you not to. Your body gives you that little stitch, says, hey, I'm not ready to stay in this. All right, let's come down to the feet. And um, so you'll need your, whatever you're gonna uh, use to be able to slide your feet and scooch forward toward the edge of the chair. Hands back on the back of the chair. If your wrists bother you uh, with the hands flexed like that, you can use your fists, be on your fists. And um, if that starts to bother the, the knuckles or the fists, then uh, slide back a little bit and just keep your hands on your hips. All right, let's start with just one foot on a slider or whatever you're sliding on and uh, flex the foot so the heel is on the on the whatever you're sliding on and when you stretch the leg out that's going to be your inhale bend the knee and slide back in that's your exhale 
Inhale, stretch out. Exhale, back in. And then we're going to start to head like spokes. Head out toward the side. Each inhale, pick a different spoke. Going uh, all the way over and out toward the side. So if straight up front was, uh, was 12 o'clock, you're going out. Well, depending on which leg you're doing, you're either going to 1 o'clock and 2 o'clock and 3 o'clock or toward 11, 10, and 9. And of course, getting all the way out to three and nine is probably not going to happen for, I don't know if I can do three and nine. So uh, if, uh, if the, just aim for whatever that would be, 2.30 and 9.30 kind of thing, or 10 and two, whatever your range of motion is. All right, now pick one of those spokes, one of the spokes that's easy for you, and we'll stay there and point and flex a couple times. And then bend it back in, go back out again, a different, slightly different spoke. And we'll take uh, circles twice around in one direction, twice around in the other direction. And then exhale that knee in and go right up front and back in a couple times. Inhale out, exhale back in. And next, when you come back in, bring it all the way back in under. Tuck your toes under for, be for a little toe stretch and stretch that leg back as far back as your chair allows. So if you got a chair rung there, you may not be able to do that. And we'll, we'll get that stretch in an, a, another position on the chair in a minute. Back again, toes tucked under. You get that toe stretch and take that slider back as far back as you can. All right, let's do all that on the other side. So the heel on the, on the, surface the foot's a little flexed inhale out exhale back in and repeat inhale out exhale in and on those spokes or points of the clock heading out and I'm, I slide my whole body to one side. My chair's kind of scooped like that. And I have these uh, knobs on the sides of my chair uh, that hit my thigh and not a good place. <laughs> so if I slide a little bit over to one side, I can eliminate that knob poking in my thigh. All right, pick one of those spokes that's really easy for you and we'll point and flex. Keep breathing just a couple times and then bring it back in on an exhale, a different spoke and circles. Twice around in one direction, twice around in the other direction and then exhale and work your way back up to the top. Even with the blanket on here, I can still feel the knobs of the chair and bring the Foot back all the way in underneath you for the toe stretch and back out. All right. All right, now as promised, we're gonna get that toe stretch in a different way, just in case you had a, a, a rung across here that prevented you from taking your foot underneath. Turn sideways on your chair and you can just do this on the corner. Uh, or all the way to the side. So if you have an arm to your chair, you won't be able to go all the way around like this. Just head, head toward that corner as much as you can. What you want to do is sit on the edge of the chair so that your leg that's toward the screen here can drop down in front of the chair. And the back toes tucked under so you can get that toe stretch. So uh, back toes tucked under and then you're just going to start to take that leg back kind of toward a lunge and that the more that leg goes back not only do, are you going to get a stretch here in the front of the thigh but you get that toe stretch too this is a twofer and uh, more uh, ankle and toe stretches by swinging that heel down and up the back heel down and up and you can even swing it all the way around the other way and it'll come into this side of the hip here a couple of times back and forth and then bend that knee in and now uh, before we did the spokes uh, in the front so we're going to pick it up from where we left off and stretch the leg out and these so that would be sort of from 2 30 or wherever we left off down to six o'clock with the, the way it is facing me 
or you're going, you're working your way counterclockwise from 10 down to six. Yeah, so you can feel that getting into the thigh and even this outer hip area there. All right, and, and we'll pick one of those spokes. Let me pick one where you can see my foot. And uh, same thing, the heel lifting and going down and the toes are tucked under as much as that uh, is possible and feels good for you. So you'll feel that come into the big toe to get a big stretch the more you wind it around and into the pinky, nice, nice st toe stretch. And the bottom of the foot, the more you push your foot back and bring your heel forward, you'll stretch into the sole of the foot. And then unwind yourself and let's work it around to the other side. Oops. All right, so as far around as your chair allows and your front leg needs to be able to clear the front of the chair so that you can drop that knee down in front. Oops, lost my slider. Toes tucked under on this back foot and start to slide it back and bend it. Actually, let's do those first. Let's do the clock first. So finish off your clock. Uh, now for me, it's two, uh, 10 o'clock down to six o'clock. Yeah, that feels so good, warms up the hip. Nice, and keep your toes tucked under as much as your foot allows. All right, and then really keep the toes tucked under as you go for that stretch with the heel going down and up. Hope you can see that well enough. And then uh, going toward straight back behind you, it's a little, often it's just a little bit deeper. Of course, if it's too deep, it's, uh, taking that leg out, whatever angle is working for you today. All right, let's see, was that all we did on that side? I believe so. Now let's take it way, way back, stretch the toes back and pull the heel forward and back and forward and back. All right, and then come to neutral, facing the front. And we'll take uh, hands back behind again and at the edge, sitting forward at the edge of your chair and heels on the chair. Stretch the feet out, both feet at the same time and out on the inhale, back in on the exhale. All right, and then um, you don't really need the slider for the next one, so let's kick those off to the sides and bring one foot underneath you, toes tucked under. You're sitting on the edge of the chair and kind of spinning on the ball of the foot there on their toes really and let the knee go out to the side that's your inhale bring the knees back toward each other on the exhale press the heel down all right let me just show that from the side might be easier so our toes are tucked under don't you, you stay facing forward i'm just showing you here and i don't think you can see the foot any better that way so when the knee goes out, press the heel down, back in. So the heel up, and then when the knee goes out, I take the heel down so you get the stretch through the calf and the Achilles tendon there. All right, close it back up on the exhale, and we'll take the other side, slide the foot back, toes tucked under, you're at the edge of the chair, inhale, Swing the knee out, just spinning on the toes there. Exhale back in. Out and back in. Heel down. Out. We didn't do the heel down there. Exhale back in. Heel down. And heel down. Let's do one more. All right. So those are the kind of um, toe stretches and feet stretches we're gonna do standing up out of the chair now. So come on up. And um, I'm just gonna turn my chair sideways. 
So it's easier to see what I'm doing. I think I have to move the webcam up a little. Let's try that. All right. Yeah, I think that'll work. Okay, so you're going to um, stretch one foot back, toes are tucked under, and the uh, both uh, heels going down toward the floor. Keep your front heel down as you stretch the back heel down. And if that you get too much of a stretch, uh, you took the foot back too much, just shorten the stance a little bit. If it was easy for you and you didn't feel a stretch when you took your heel down, see if you can back the foot up even more and get the heel down. And then keeping that back heel down, don't let it, the back heel come up, bend the front knee toward the chair. That deepens the stretch in the back foot and sometimes we get a calf stretch in the front foot too. So we're just gonna bend and straighten this front leg a couple more times. The breath work here is when you bend the knee, exhale, keep the back leg straight, inhale. And this leg, front leg can go as straight as you like on the inhale. Exhale, bend the front knee, but keep the back heel down and that back leg as straight as it's willing to go. All right, and that calf stretch helps us, we're gonna change legs, helps um, uh, stretch the sole of the foot because that Achilles tendon comes all the way around that heel bone into the bottom of the foot. So sometimes when you wake up and you, your heels hurt when you first touch the ground with that heel pain, uh, it's, uh, this will help with that. All right, calf stretches. So I changed legs, took the back foot back, back heel down, and I'm bending the front knee, bending and straightening the front knee while I keep my back leg as straight as it's willing to go. All right. All right, next we'll take downward dog uh, using the chair. So I'm gonna use the chair uh, back and you can put your hands on the sides of the chair or on the top and walk your feet back and then start to take your hips back. Start with knees bent, take your hips back, back, back and stretching there and then start to take one or both legs straight. I'm gonna just kind of walk in place and bend one knee and then the other. All right, and then I'm gonna lift the heels so my toes get a stretch and heels down, hips back. And then from here, I'm gonna take one leg back and do similar to what we did before. So this back heel may not go down as uh, back as far. So not as long a stance there as I was before, but the heel's going down. And I'm gonna take the heel down uh, toward the inside, so the foot's at an angle, then take the heel straight back, and then take the heel down to the outside and go back and forth through those three basic positions. So that's really getting into the calf and then changing legs, changing feet, angle that foot. So if the heel going straight back is six o'clock, you want to go a little bit toward five and seven. All right, and then bring the feet in, walk in. And uh, both feet on the floor, feet parallel to each other. So when you look down at your feet, the feet are not turned out, not turned out, not pigeon toed, but feet parallel to each other. Keep the heels down and bend the knees. Look down and see that your knees aren't knocking in toward each other or splaying out, but going straight over the toes. Keep your heels down, heels down, bend your knees towards your chair. If you hit the chair, you're too close in, back, back your feet up a little bit. So that just depends on your leg length and I guess the, the uh, uh, architecture of the chair. All right, heels down, bend the knees. A couple of times, heels down. And the, you don't wanna go down so far that you feel knee pain. Some folks feel knee pain. And if you feel knee pain, then definitely turn your toes out a little bit and let the knees splay out a little. It's kind of like a plie, not quite as deep as a ballerina and or Turn the toes in pigeon toed and bend the knees, knocking the knees 
knees in toward each other. So basically your knees go toward the toes. So if your toes are in, the knees come in. If your toes are out, the knees go out. It's hard to see here, huh? Knees going out with my toes going out. You see my feet well enough. And if the toes are in, the knees go in. So either one of those is fine just to save the knees. Uh, if the knees are fine, keep the feet parallel like we did before. All right, so let's bend the knees again and lift the heels. Heels down, toes up. And when you take the toes up, the legs tend to go straight, but it doesn't matter. The knees can stay bent. So back and forth, heels up, toes up, heels up, toes up. All right. Now, if you're near a wall, um, great. Sorry, this is going to have my back to you. Uh, see if I can pretend like this is a wall. So that's a wall. So that my other block. Okay. <laughs> so that's a wall. Take your toes up the wall. So it flexes your toes. Sorry, my block is moving when I do that. So you wanna bring your toes up on the baseboard. So see if I can uh, make this. Toes up on the baseboard. You can, like you can put your back to us. We can, we, we'll be able to see you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, just do one foot at a time. The toes up on the baseboard. I'll do my right foot. And bend the, keep the heel down and bend the knee straight in so uh if this unless this bothers your knee then you're going to need to do a turn out or a turn in the toes up on the baseboard toes going in toward the wall and stretch your other foot back so we're doing that uh, similar stretch so keep walking the back foot back and 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 make sure you can keep that heel down Oops, I'm out of the camera. Back heel down, and that back foot can turn those same angles that we were playing with before. So my foot's at a little bit of an angle. So that's straight back, and that's at a little bit of an angle with my toes heading over there toward the door. Knee toward the wall, and the back heel down. That's easy, you need a longer stance. Back the back foot up another inch or so. All right, and bend and straighten the front leg, keeping that back heel down. All right, and then change legs. Now I'm gonna step back so my other foot meets where, where the back foot was. So I'm, I know I'm doing the same distance on each side between the front leg and the back leg. All right. Same thing here, that back foot needs to stay down, back heel down as you bend the front knee. And you can play with the angles of that back foot. So my right hip calf is tighter. I just had to shorten the stance because I couldn't keep my heel down. So I had to shorten the stance a bit when I took the heel straight back to six o'clock. Can't quite keep that heel down when I bend the knee. So I could do that on my left side. So now I know oh, my right calf is tighter. Actually, I even need to shorten it more. All right. All right, and then let's just shake it out. Just walk in place, shake up, shaking the legs out. And we're gonna come back to the chair, sitting in the chair. Chair sliders. Uh, we're done with the block, so those can be out of the way. Okay. All right, so let's take some standing poses in a chair. So you're gonna turn sideways, and again, you can be toward the corner or all the way around. And you need one of the sliders for the leg that's closest to the screen. And you're gonna pick one of those spokes toward the back or the bottom half of the clock, any of those spokes that feel good, and 
Move the foot so you, the heel goes down. I'm gonna come, I have to go back so you can see my foot. Turn toward your front knee, the bent knee. Exhale, and just a little lean forward over that front foot, exhaling. Then inhale, come on up. A little back bend, squeezing the shoulder blades toward each other and the arms coming up. And then turning sideways, arms go out for warrior two. Go back to warrior one. Arms down in front and bend the back knee. And we'll walk it around to the other side. The leg that's toward the screen is on the slider. And play with those angles. Stretching that back leg. This is great to get into these hip flexors in the front of the thigh when you're sitting in a chair all day. Uh, or most of our Western exercises really have a lot of hip flexion and not extension. So that when that further that leg can go back, the more you get hip extension, which is great and healthy for your hips. Heel down and the back foot, turn to face the bent knee on front, exhale. Next exhale, take a little lean forward. Inhale, come all the way up, arms up, squeezing the shoulder blades toward each other for warrior one. Turning sideways, arms out wide, warrior two, you're facing the screen. Go back to warrior one, inhale. And bend the arms, back leg bends, and come to face the front. Just kick your slider out of the way. And uh, cat-cow movement here, the rounded spine on the exhale, a little back bend on the inhale, and repeat. All right, let's go to the side again. And we'll repeat those standing poses, warrior one and warrior two, and we're gonna add on flank stretch. So set the back leg. Any of those angles comfortable for you so that you can see my foot, I have to go all the way back. <laughs> and turn toward the front knee. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, warrior one, arms up as high as comfortable for you and your shoulders. Exhale, warrior two. And flank stretch will come down laterally, elbow to thigh. So we're looking for a stretch in the side waist, which we're gonna use that arm to help with. That arm come all the way over, arm by the ear, and put it in reverse, back to the hip. Come on up to warrior two. Stay here for an exhale. Inhale, warrior one. Facing your front knee, and our arms come down, bend the back knee, exhale. Walk it around to the other side. And set the back foot. Any angle that works for you, where the back heel can go down as much as possible. Get that back heel down, then face your front knee. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, come on up, arms up for warrior one. Exhale, turn toward the screen, arms out sideways, warrior two. Next exhale, flank stretch. And put that top arm back to the hip. Come on back up to warrior two, inhale. Stay here for the exhale. Turn toward the front knee, arms up for warrior one. And exhale, bending everything, and walk it back to the front. And we'll repeat that cat-cow movement here. Cat-cow movement is our counter pose after we did asymmetrical stretches. This helps kind of square everything back up. All right, let's just pause here. 
All right, so one of a, a stretch that's nice for a wrist, for a carpal tunnel. Let me come forward, actually. I can see this better. Is to bring the thumb across to touch the pinky. Let's sit down for a minute. So um, see how my wrists are flexed back? You don't want to do that. So keep your wrist as straight as possible and slide the thumb down the pinky and back up. And you can slide the thumb on the inside edge, down the, the center of the pinky, or down the outside edge. The outside edge is more difficult, of course, but it does help to reshape the bones in the wrist that um, allow for the, um, what they call the carpal tunnel. So um, as far across, and if you have carpal tunnel, sometimes even touching the pinky isn't doable, in which case use your ring finger. So you wanna stretch that thumb across the uh, palm as much as possible to whatever finger it'll touch and do the inside edge, then the center, and then the outside edge. And you're trying to um, make these bones go in that uh, sort of shape like that so the medial vein, uh, medial uh, nerve can get through there. All right. And then a nice thing to do for pain anywhere in the body, it seems like it would only work for um, your hands and arms, but sometimes we get shoulder pain, nerve pain, down an arm, back up a little bit, oh, maybe too much, <laughs> is um, these what we call finger slides. So touch your uh, thumb to the index finger, just pause there and then on an inhale we're going to slide the thumb down the index finger you can do this one hand at a time exhale back to the tip and then give a little flick and then go to the next finger thumb touching the middle finger inhale slide down exhale back to the tip and flick and uh, if you have carpal tunnel, again, keep that wrist straight. And sometimes it helps to have the palms down. If you turn the palms up, there's more of a chance that you flex the wrist back, which uh, is not so great for carpal tunnel. So you can kind of imagine that you have a wrist brace on there and uh, either keep the hands up like this or even palms down. Sliding, I'm on the uh, ring finger now. And then go to the last finger, the pinky. and repeat. So if you were only doing one hand at a time, now you're doing your other side. Otherwise we're doing uh, both again. This is also very calming and relaxing for the nervous system. So we recommend this sometimes for folks who wake up in the middle of the night having difficulty going back to bed. When you're lying in bed, your palms and wrists will be resting flat on the bed, you know, beside you. And so you don't have to worry about which way the palms are turned. Just uh, take these finger slides and don't do the flick. The flick is a little more uh, alert or awakening for the body. So skip that. Just do the uh, inhale, exhale, go to the next finger, inhale, exhale. All right. Now, um, lastly, we'll just um, sit in your chair, palms up or down, whatever's comfortable. And if you feel like you need to shake that out after... Uh, doing that, please do. Otherwise, just resting and eyes open or closed, whatever is more relaxing for you. We're going to tune back into the breath now. And because we don't want to challenge the body anymore, uh, we're not going to pick one of the breaths that was a challenge. So which of those locations for breathing was easiest for you? And we'll do that, but just make the breath a little bit longer, especially the exhale. So inhale a little bit and exhale a little bit longer. So make your exhale last longer by exhaling um, as though you uh, inhale, um, like if you picture the standing at a faucet and you turn the faucet on full blast, you get a big inhale in, a big stream into the cup underneath the faucet. And then when you exhale, pour it out very slowly. So it takes a lot longer to empty than it did to fill it up. So inhale, big breath in, and then exhale nice and slow. 
barely releasing. Not so slow and not so fast that it ad- is agitating. So you've got to sort of find that Goldilocks moment of just right for you. Nice, long, slow, smooth exhale. One more like that. When the exhale is longer, it's uh, very calming for most people. Everybody's different. So if you find that breath more agitating, then skip it. And just after that last one, just let your breath do whatever it wants. And so if you did find that breath more agitating, uh, and just skip it and let your breath do whatever it wants which is what we're all doing now. Let's just imagine we're like an ice cube or a stick of butter that's been left out and is melting. Just let your body melt. It feels like you're going to have a big puddle around your feet. Dripping off the chair. Onto the floor. You are more than welcome to stay there melting. Whenever you're ready to uh, unwind and bring yourself back up, give a little movement and uh, imagine yourself back to its beautiful, solid self, nice and healthy with lots of muscles work today. And as you wake your body up, just do a tiny cat-cow movement. You can stay melting as long as you like. And when you're ready, just slowly bring your solid self back to a little movement. And I thank you for joining me today. Namaste.